Good afternoon. Hi. How are you? Salam alaikum. Uh, my name is Jauma Hofre uh, Eichhorn. Um, I'm originally from Germany and from Bolivia in Latin America. Uh, but I've been working for the last five years in Central Asia, uh, in Afghanistan, where the country has been at war for um, almost 33 years. Um, it's my great pleasure to, to be here. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me. It's really an honor to be at this uh, very important uh, conference, to have such a wonderful audience, and to share a little bit the work that uh, we are doing, my colleagues and I, in Afghanistan with uh, community-based uh, theater. And I will talk a little bit about the theater in a while. Um, before I start, I would quickly like to dedicate uh, this presentation and the whole work that I'll be doing here with you, uh, hopefully in the afternoon as well in the workshop, um, to two of my colleagues from Afghanistan. Um, one is Salim, uh, who was meant to be here with me today to present our work, but unfortunately he could not get his visa, um, which is a very common problem for Afghan citizens because of the war, uh, because of the terrorism, because of the Taliban. So unfortunately he did not get the visa to come to Hong Kong. Um, um, the second person I would like to dedicate the presentation to is a good friend of mine called Shikeb. And Shikeb was one of our theater actors, one of our theater facilitators. And unfortunately, he uh, had to leave the country because of the theater work. Uh, he was threatened, he was killed almost. Uh, he spent several weeks in the hospital because the theater gave him an exposure, uh, because the theater uh, showed his face in a way that uh, uh, pissed many people off, that made many people very angry. And as a result, he had to leave the country two years ago and now lives in, in Europe in exile. Um, so this is for you, Salim and Shakib. Uh, I will always be grateful for all your work. Thank you. Um, Afghanistan is the land of poetry. It's, uh, it's the one country where every single citizen knows at least one or two poems. And when I say poems, I mean long poems. Everyone can uh, recite a poem. So even though the, the talk is more about theater, I figured I would do a couple of quotes um, of famous Afghan poets so that you get a bit of a feel for this idea of empathy, this idea of uh, working together with people. And we also have a little bit of music from an Afghan instrument called the rubab, which is a bit like a, like a guitar, uh, very famous in Afghanistan. So for a minute or so, I will give you three quotes and some music, and then I will talk about Afghanistan and the theater, okay? So the first quote is by the famous Persian poet Hafiz, and it goes, Fear is the cheapest room in the house. I would like to see you living in better conditions. The second quote is by Rumi, Maulana, one of the most famous poets of all time. And he says, Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I will meet you there. And the third quote again by Hafiz, I wish I could show you when you are lonely or in darkness the astonishing light of your own being.
Afghanistan is a landlocked country in Central Asia. Um, there are 30 million people living in the country. It's not a small place at all, but it's surrounded by huge neighbors, some of whom have had imperial ambitions for many, many years. There's a border with Pakistan, uh, nuclear power. There's a border with Iran. Um, in the north, uh, Afghanistan borders uh, the former Soviet Union, uh, today the Central Asian republics. Um, and then there's even a small 75-kilometer border with China. So Afghanistan is surrounded by giants. Um, and as a result of that, historically, Afghanistan has become a, a melting pot of different cultures. Um, there's over 30 different ethnicities in the country, um, all of them with their own languages, with their own uh, cultural traditions. Uh, most of them Muslim, in fact, uh, all of them basically, but with different interpretations of Islam. Um, Afghanistan has been part of the Silk Road, uh, very uh, close to the Central Asian republics. Um, and Afghanistan has historically been, and you see a couple of pictures here of the country and some of the people, Afghanistan has historically been a, a playing field, let's say, for some of these larger nations that we talked about before, that I mentioned before. Um, for instance, uh, the British Empire tried to conquer Afghanistan three times in the 19th century and at the beginning of the 20th century uh, and failed, ultimately. Um, afterwards, uh, Afghanistan had roughly 70, 80 years of peace, of reasonably democratic development, but being a monarchy, basically, until the 1970s. And then, um, from the mid-1980s, the situation got worse and worse. And from 19... Uh, Seven, I'm sorry, from the late 70s. And from 1978 on, Afghanistan has been at war for 33 years straight. We are now entering the 34th year. Um, it's important to know, as a bit of a background information for what we do with the theater, that the conflict in Afghanistan is a long one. It's not one continuous conflict, but it's four different conflicts that basically went um, without a break from one to the other. Um, the first conflict was between the Soviet-backed government, so the Soviet Red Army came to Afghanistan to support the Afghan government against a group of religiously inspired um, um, uh, groups of mujahideen, of freedom fighters. Uh, eventually, the freedom fighters won, and the Soviet Union had to leave, or the Soviet Army had to leave the country. And what happened, though, is that uh, those groups who had fought together against the Soviet Union were no longer able to find common ground when it came to, uh, to make up a government and to rule the country. And as a result, a civil war happened. And the civil war was absolutely brutal. It destroyed most of the country, especially the capital, Kabul. Almost one million people were killed in only four years. Um, and what happened as a result of that is that the Taliban came to power, um, the famous Taliban, um, because they presented themselves as the true Islamic and Muslim alternative to these Muslim groups that were fighting each other in the civil war. And they had large support of the population because they promised peace and they promised a true adherence to the religion. Um, and what happened as a result of it is that eventually they conquered most of the country and started to rule the country for five years. It's important to know that the Taliban had a very harsh regime that uh, basically uh, had very clear rules for women not to leave their houses, for example. There was a little schooling, but they provided a certain sense of security that was not there before. Uh -huh. However, after September 11th, that all of you are probably aware of, what happened is that the U.S. invaded Afghanistan and eventually ousted the Taliban. And since then, the Taliban, partially supported originally by Al-Qaeda, has been trying to fight um, the United States and NATO for the last 10 years. And so the war has been going on. 33 years of war. It's in that context that we're working with theater. Um, I will read out very quickly a testimony before talking more specifically about the theater work, but I think it's important to know a little bit about some of the things that the people have been going through over the last 33 years. This woman is called Zara, and I will read you verbatim um, her life and how she's been living for the past few years. My name is Zara. And right after my birth in the Afghan city of Herat, my family and I left for Iran, where we spent the next 21 years as war refugees. At age 13, I was married against my will 
And at 14, I had my first child who died within a year. I was 15 when my daughter was born. My husband was addicted to opium and severely abused me and the children. Nonetheless, I managed to finish school and train to become a social worker. In order to support my husband's therapy, I also worked as a construction worker, 18 hours a day for a contracted 50,000 bricks per week. I worked pregnant until my son was born and returned to work only three days later. After the fall of the Taliban, we returned to Afghanistan and I started working for an organization giving microcredits to impoverished women. I continued to be abused by my husband who one day tried to kill me and the children by burning down the house. We barely survived, but it helped me decide to finally leave my husband, something that is almost impossible to do for an Afghan woman, no matter the abuse. In my case, after the divorce, my in-laws kidnapped my two children. I was desperate, and in late 2008, I took my children and escaped to Kabul knowing that I could never return home because my in-laws would kill me. In Kabul, we slept in the guards room of a local women's organization. I worked for $50 a month as a literacy teacher for women, had a second job as admin staff, and a third job as a cook on a local TV show. Working very hard, our lives gradually improved, and we now live in our own house. My children go to school, and I continue to struggle for women's rights in my country, this time working with theater as a tool for women's empowerment. Uh, you can see Zara with the red headscarf. Uh, she's the, one of the most amazing people I've ever met. She's one of the people that make up the Afghanistan Human Rights and Democracy Organization, the organization that we founded together approximately three years ago. It's an organization that was set up by a group of Afghan colleagues of mine and myself with the idea to use the theater as a means for change, as a means for bottom-up change. Yeah. It's an organization that is very interesting because it distinguishes itself from other organizations by the fact that it cuts across the ethnic divide so we have all the different or most of the major ethnicities in the organization. There is a gender balance between men and women which almost never happens in the country. And what's also interesting is that we make our decisions together. So there's a collective decision-making process with regards to projects, with regards to budgets, with regards to salaries. So it's a very participatory approach of running an organization. Um, the method that we've chosen to work with is community-based theater. And community-based theater is different from more traditional theater in that it's an approach that works with non-actors. It works with ordinary people. And it works with the idea that theater must make a difference in society. The idea that theater can be more than just a tool for entertainment, that theater can be more than just a tool for uh, raising awareness, but that theater can actually be a way of life, and that theater can be a way of transforming society. One of the main techniques, and we will look at that technique in the workshop today, is called forum theater. And in forum theater, what you do is you develop a play, usually very short, five, ten minutes long, with a group of people who face a problem. For example, we work a lot with victims of war. So we get a group of victims together, 10, 20 people, usually widows, and together with them, we play some theater games and exercises for a few days, and then um, we discuss through the exercises some of the issues that the victims face in their lives. Yeah? Based on that discussion, step by step, we develop a play. And that play is developed by the victims themselves. It's developed by the participants. The victims develop the play, they decide on the content, and they also act out the play. It's important to say that this play does not have a happy ending. This play only shows the problem. It shows different problems that exist in the lives, for example, of widows in Afghanistan today. Unemployment, uh, exclusion, marginalization, discrimination. So you show the problem on the stage in the play, performed by the victims themselves. The performance is an interactive one. It's very exciting because usually theater is very top-down. You sit there, I perform my play, you watch, I perform, you clap. 
more or less like that. You're very passive. Huh? Maybe you think at the end about the play. Sometimes there's a question and answer. Forum theater is different. In forum theater, the audience is invited to participate. In fact, the focus of the whole performance is on the audience. How? In forum theater, as I said, we show a problem, and then we try to find a solution together with the audience. So we show the problem once so that you know what it's about, and the second time around, we show the play again, but this time you can say stop, and you can come on stage, and you can replace one of the characters, and you can try to solve the problem in a realistic way. The other actors and actresses, they respond to your idea, and sometimes there's a solution, and sometimes there's not. But what we always have is dialogue. Dialogue about issues that are very important to the community. And that is our idea of empathy. That's what we're talking about, what to do with empathy. I think our idea is to turn empathy into action. Action through the theater, action by working with, as opposed to for the victims, yeah? presenting a play that is based on the life of the people to an audience and try to find a solution together and we see what happens. That's the idea of forum theater and we've been doing this for the past three years in hundreds of workshops, uh, hundreds of performances. I think we had roughly 15, 20,000 people in the audience all together. Um, and believe it or not, in over three years we have raised almost $800,000 for theater activities in Afghanistan. It's become a huge thing all over the country. Um, it's challenging because uh, uh, policies are constantly changing. The international community is changing some of their policies. There is less money available this year. We're even close to uh, perhaps closing this year just because the policies are changing. But overall, for the past three years, it's been an amazing, amazing ride. Um, one thing that is perhaps particularly interesting from a democracy and empathy perspective is the idea of legislative theater. And in legislative theater, you use forum theater to create laws. We have done this last year in Afghanistan, throughout 2011, with a focus on women's rights. So what we did is, we did uh, five workshops, uh, ten workshops, uh, sorry, in five different provinces of Afghanistan, working exclusively with marginalized, oppressed women. They developed their own place, and then we performed these plays 50 times in different parts of the country. Over 5,000 people came to the performance. Over 500 people said stop and came on stage. And what we did is we took these ideas, we wrote them down, we went through them together with a lawyer, and we looked for patterns. What do these ideas have in common? Yeah? What do they suggest, really? What kind of change do they suggest? We took these ideas, uh, and we worked together with a group of parliamentarians from the Afghan National Parliament. And what they have done now is they took what we have produced and they are now using these ideas that came from ordinary people in the audience and they're using these ideas as basis for discussion in the Afghan parliament. And the hope is that one or two laws that protect women's rights will come out of a theater performance. That's called legislative theater and it's the idea of democratizing democracy through theater and through the participation of ordinary people and in this case ordinary women. One of the most wonderful uh, initiatives, I believe, one of the most innovative initiatives that's out there. I think I have a minute and a half, and I think it's probably time to wrap up. Um, in conclusion, I would like to take us back 800 years to the Italian poet Dante uh, and his uh, Divine Comedy. And in the Inferno of Dante, you remember probably how uh, he himself, Dante, is uh, walking in a dark forest, uh, and he can't find his way, he's lost. Yeah. And he's a attacked by three wild beasts, unable to find the right way to salvation. Uh -huh. And he's helped in the end by whom? By the poet Virgil. He's helped by a poet. If we replace uh, Dante with the victims of Afghanistan, and if we replace the woods of Italy with the mountains of Afghanistan, if we replace the poet Virgil with the actors and theater facilitators of HRDO, I think we have our definition of empathy. It's walking together with the victims of Afghanistan in the forest, in the mountains, to use the theater to create spaces where the tears of pain, of hardship, of violence, of loss, of torture, where these tears can be transformed into energy, into energy to change the country, 
into energy to create peace in the country, into energy to create a more democratic, a more just, a more beautiful society. We believe that theater can make a difference. Um, we believe that we can walk together in the mountains and in the forests. Um, thank you. <laughs>